Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify an expression with exponents using the quotient rule. So I wrote up the quotient rule right here and basically what it says is whenever you're dividing two exponents with the same base, then you're going to subtract the powers. I also wrote up some other rules which I'm going to get to, but let me kind of just explain um, again this rule to kind of make sure it makes sense. So if I was going to do, you know, 3 cubed divided by 3 squared, well we know that's just going to equal 3, right? Now, you could work this out a couple different ways. You could do 3 cubed, which is 27, divided by 9, which we know is 3. You could also do 3 cubed as 3 times 3 times 3, divo divided by 3 squared, which is 3 times 3, using the uh, um, quotient property, or the division property. You can see that, again, the answer is equal to 3. So you could multiply them, evaluate, ex multiply them out, and then simplify. Or you could uh, use this expression, or you could multiply them out with their powers and see that they're still going to give you the exact same result. So again, whenever we are dividing, um, whenever we are dividing, blah, 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 blah. whenever we are dividing exponents, as long as the same base, we're going to subtract their powers. So basically in this example, all I simply need to do is subtract the, num the power in the numerator divided by the power in the denominator, and that gives me x squared. In this exa next example, I'm going to do the same thing. y to the seventh minus 8 equals y to the negative first. Now, that brings in an interesting thing. What do we do with the negatives? Now, um, <clears throat> you can see that I wrote out some other rules. If I have a variable to the negative power, that's the same thing as writing it as a positive power in the denominator. If it's negative, if it's a negative power in the denominator, I can write it positive in the numerator. And the reason why this makes sense is let's look at, let's break this apart using this way. y to the seventh is really y times y times y times y times y times y times y. All over y times 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 y. So if you're going to use the division property, that goes to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And you're left over with 1, 2, and the same. So y to the negative first power is the same thing as 1 over y. And that's the preferred route, unless it's saying that you can keep them. And with negative powers, we usually like to just uh, leave them with positive powers. OK, in the next example, now we have some numbers um, that we're going to do as coefficients. And remember, we always want to do the numbers kind of separately. And sometimes, uh, you remember, you're just doing division. So you can either divide the denominator into the numerator. If it doesn't evenly divide, for instance, like this one, then we have to reduce the fraction. So again, I'll rewrite this as 3 over 6 times a to the fifth minus 3. Well, 3 over 6, um, 6 does not divide into 3, but you can reduce that fraction as 1 half. And then that's going to be as a squared times a squared which we can just write this as a squared over 2. OK, um, looking into the next one, now again, you can see you're just going to break them apart. So that's going to be 28 over 7 times b to the fifth minus 12. OK, now you can see that 7 actually does divide into 28. 7 divides into 28 four times. And then we have b to the negative seventh. Now again, using my um, negative power, um, or sorry, negative x power rule, uh, what I can do is now rewrite that in the denominator. So you can think of these as being all over 1. So therefore, to rewrite that as in the denominator, I'd rewrite it, rewrite it as 4 divided by b to the 7th. OK? Um, sometimes you're going to have numbers that cannot, does not evenly divide into it or can be reduced. And you just have to leave it like this. So in that case, um, but still we're going to do the same thing. Let's break everything apart. So I have 4 to the fifth, which can't be reduced, x to the 4 minus 4, and y to the 8 minus 3. The next one is, um, <coughs> so that gives me x to the 4 or 5, so x to the 0, y to the fifth. Um, there's a last rule is any variable, it doesn't matter, or any, any base um, raised up to the 0 power is always going to equal 1. So Therefore, we know that this is going to be 1. That's technically uh, over 1. So therefore, we can write our final result as 4y to the fifth divided by 5. OK? Um, all right, lastly, let's just go ahead and do this. Again, 16 over 7 cannot be reduced. So I'm just going to leave that as 16 over 7. Then I'll have a to the 5 minus 3 
b to the 4 minus 10, and d to the 5 minus 3. When doing that, I obtain a squared, b to the negative 6th, and d squared. So therefore, I know that the b to the negative 6th, to make that uh, positive, I'm going to put that in the denominator with the 7, and the a and the d are going to remain up top. So my final answer is going to be 16a squared, d squared, all over 7, b to the 6th power. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. That is how you simplify an expression with exponents using the quotient rule. Thanks.